Hello, guys. All right, so I am going to be showing you guys how I do my cutting for my t shirt quilts. So, for my t shirt quilts, I do one of two things I determine what size I want the shirt to be. They're going to see if you walk through, but just your body. Um, that's just my daughter. Um, I like to determine whether I want a full size or a half size block. Yeah, you can print. So this is the full size block and then this is the half size block. So this one here, when you do the seam allowance is half of this one. So this is a half a block and this is a full block. Um, I find that I don't really use the three fourths block as often. So I, I only use my half block and my full block for most t-shirt quilts. Um, so what I do is if I know that the back is just a blank, so this particular design, I knew it was a full block. Okay, so on the back, there's nothing there. So what I do is I just lay down my shirt, make it as flat as possible, because sometimes these um, transfers have a little bit of movement, movement to this. Hello, Margaret. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my, um, my template down. Now my template, uh, I know it's harder to see on camera because it's, it's got a lot of beautiful glitter on it, but this here has a whole, it has a cross line. So I can tell where my center point is. And then it also has a dash line all the way around telling me what my seam allowance is. So that way I can really try to center things up and make sure that it looks good. Not that it's centered on the t-shirt itself, but on the design, because a lot of times just by wear and tear um, of the t-shirt, you don't really have a straight t-shirt straight on. All right, so now I'm gonna cut it. So all I do is hold it down, apply pressure. Okay. This is a little harder because I am on camera. Usually I just move to the other side and it's a little easier, but with me being <laughs> on camera, obviously it's a little harder because I can't get to the right angle. There we go. Okay, so this gets thrown away. Okay, and then I have two piles going on here. So I've got one pile that has the full block, and that's right there. And then this one that has a blank that doesn't have anything on it, I put that aside. Because that's what I call a filler. So if for some reason I need to use a, hello, Melissa, a filler, meaning that I need to um, put in some patchwork somewhere to fill in a block, to fill in the size of the quilt, then I can do that. So here is one that the mom, that she pointed both of them. So that means she had identified the front and the back needing to be used. So what I tell my clients to do is to put a pin on the side of the t-shirt that they're going to be using on, on the quilt, whichever one they want me to use on the quilt. Sometimes some designs is only, um, it's two-sided, but she only wants to keep one side. So this is how I identify which which block I'm keeping. Um, and this is how I do it. So instead of me putting the, the thing template on it and cutting it out, what I do is I cut it down the side and under the arm. So I pick it up just like so. And I'm going to cut down the side, just like that. And then go onto this side, oops. Sorry, I have things in my way. All right, there we go. Um, I'm trying to 
going to give you guys some more light. That didn't really help. That's all right. All right, so do the same thing on this side. So what I do is I pick it up from under the arm and then at the side, like so, and cut it in half. This doesn't have to be any precise kind of way because we're not keeping the sides, we're not keeping the sleeves. Um, but I just want to keep the designs. So I just want to make sure I separate them so I'm not cutting it improperly. All right, so now what I've done is I've done it so that I can kind of like butterfly open it is the best way I can describe it. Um, and then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this up and move it on to make sure it's completely on my cutting mat. Make sure that's nice and down and then do my block. So what I have noticed is even though this looks ginormous, right? Absolutely huge. Um, I have found that this size for my template works perfectly, like 98.999% of the time. So I use a quarter inch seam allowance and this is a half inch. So it's giving me a little bit of a grace around. So even though this could be, um, right that up. okay so even though it kind of looks like it's getting off a little bit it's not so what i'm gonna do i would rather have this be straight than anything else so let me do that okay and if anything possibly might get cut i would rather be down here than the actual name so okay that looks good for me i'm gonna make sure there's nothing underneath So now I've got that design there. And now I can flip it the other way for the other side. So I tell my clients to count each design as a block. So even though there's one t-shirt, this one had two blocks because it had a front and the back she wanted to use. So normally, um, is anywhere between 20 to 24 blocks in a standard t-shirt size quilt. If you're looking to do something that's oversized, then you're going to go into like the 30 to, you know, 36 um, type of thing. It has to be an even number. It cannot be an odd number. Sometimes I get odd numbers and that's why I have these extra blocks over there for fillers and then I ask them if they want to like put something on there like I can put HTV on it but now that I have the capability um, here locally to get DTF um, you know the world's my oyster pretty much to design things that are very custom to it for my clients which is awesome And I don't like to take the, the little pin off until after I've already cut it, just to make sure that I have the correct design. Move that to the side. And that goes there, and I'll grab another one. Where did you get the block template from, Sandra? So I got this block template custom made from Leslie over at Jolie Lee Creations. Um, so she is my template lady. <laughs> she um, she creates all of my glitter templates now. So yeah, anytime I need anything specific or designed or whatever, I that's who I reach out to. Um, and she does all of my templates. All right, so I'm gonna take this gel. So the great thing about Leslie, maybe not right now because it's probably Christmas time and it's really busy, but um, I pretty much 
since I make patterns and stuff, I pretty much just drafted this up in my pattern software um, the way I wanted it and sent it to her. And then she was able to get it made for me. Now, this particular design only has one safety pin. So that's why I'm just going to go ahead and just cut through both of them. It just makes it easier. It's time saving. I'll show you guys here. Oh, that's why it's on the edge. <laughs> um, I'll show you guys here in a second um, how to do the half block. Like I said, I had a, a, a fourth, a three fourths block, but I don't really use it. I have it, but I don't really use it. So there's no sense in me trying to show you guys that one because I don't usually use it. Because what I found, if it's too big for a half block, usually I can center it up to make it look really good on a full block. And it does the same thing. All right. Oh, you're fine. The door's opening. They know. My peeps know. <laughs> okay, so now this is the front. And then this is the back that she didn't want to keep. But I always keep these to the side. Like I said, again, I need a filler block or something like that. That has his name on it. So I could easily make this into a half block if I needed it. Like if I had an odd number of half blocks, I can make this one into a half block. And then I get, an, then I get an even number instead of an odd number. All right. I've got a few more of the large blocks. And then I can move over to the, to the other one. Okay, so this one, again, is one of those button-up shirts, but this is the only design she wanted. I knew I was talking to Leslie about having templates uh, possibly available when I do, like, a t-shirt uh, quilt class, um, a workshop. So I didn't know if I wanted to do it virtually. I think I want to try it virtually. I think a virtual one would be awesome because it's something different that not a lot of people are doing. But everybody's got t-shirts. Everybody has t-shirts that they want to do something with if you've been keeping them for, for, for a while. I cut into that one a little too much on that side. That's okay. I know so many people that have t-shirts just in a bag somewhere saying, one day I'll get to making a t-shirt quilt or memory quilt. One day I'll get there. So this one doesn't have a name or anything, but I still keep it because I cut it. So I might as well keep it. Right. So I have a pile behind me. So again, this one doesn't have anything. It's just on one side. And it looks like, like these are like elementary, middle school, and high school t-shirts. From what I can gather. We actually had a tornado come through yesterday through Garner and it went right next to the Garner High School. Um, so I was getting a lot of messages and people asking me if I was okay. and How's everybody? And I was like, oh, we're good. We were literally driving back from Virginia. <laughs> so this is very helpful, this cross line here for the centering because I can see that it's centered because it's in between all of these little spokes and stuff. So that's really cool because I can kind of center it. And then I can kind of gauge the difference, the distance between here and there, which is awesome. Let me do this side first. So if I shift anything. So luckily nobody got hurt, 
there were a few houses that had trees that went through them, but nobody was in the house, or if they were, they went, they, you know, they were seeking shelter when it was being, you know, the tornado warning came through. Um, so nobody got hurt, nobody got injured. Just a few houses, and then mostly trees. Like, there was a lot of downed trees and lights and stuff in the area. But pretty fared pretty well with it, so that's good to know. All right. Okay. So I'll take that one. Keep that one there. This one here. Here. Put it over there for a possible half block. All right. I think this might be my last full block. Yeah, see, this is another school. <laughs> the great thing about this is because I've been doing these t-shirt quilts for over five years now that I have seen a lot of these school t-shirts come through quite frequently. <laughs> um, I have seen several of them come through. And I was like, oh, I know that school. Oh, I, I remember that one. That was a junior or senior or whatever like that. Hi, Jaded. Oh, Jan. Hi, Jan. I wondered about it. I was in Wake Forest when the warning came through. Yeah, so we everybody fared well. Um, nothing happened here to the studio, even though it was just like less than a mile down the road where the tornado hit. But luckily, I was in a car driving back from Virginia. <laughs> So we, we did well. The studio is doing good. We don't have any damage here. So you were in Wake Forest, huh, Jan? Sorry, excuse, excuse my shoulder in there. <sighs> I had to get a good angle in there. Okay. All right, let me see. So scary. I was also coming back from Virginia. Went to the retreat there. Oh yeah, over in um, because I remember. Yes, I remember that the in Lake Gaston, right? Lake Gaston. All right, so I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 of those. And then I got one. So that would be, because these are half blocks, so that's one, two, three, mm. I have an odd number of half blocks. So one of these, I need to make a full block. So I think what I'm going to do is make this one a full block because this is like a jersey. Um, see that? So I'll probably make this one a full block. I'll show you how to do that first. And it was beautiful and so much fun. Oh, I wish timing wise I would have been able to go. Okay, thank you. Um, I wish I could have gone. <laughs> I would have really enjoyed it, but it was literally the same weekend as my Christmas dinner party in Virginia. But we were up in Northern Virginia. All right, so because I'm going to use both of these, I want to uh, go ahead and cut down the sides because I don't know if it'll line up with that particular number there. So cut it in the side. If you ever get a jersey that has like the holes in it, so the jersey material that has um, the holes, all you have to do is 
back it with a piece of cotton or broadcloth or something like that. Um, you know, baste stitch on onto the block and then just do it like a normal block. That's how I do it. Okay. So what I mean when I'm going to have one of these be a full block, what, I, what that means is I'm going to take Sorry. I'm going to take this, make sure it lines up into the half block, which it does, right? It lines up really nicely with the half block. I'm going to see if the number 11 lines up with the half block because then I could fit the number 11 right underneath the garner. Um, and then that works. So let's see. I don't know if that's going to work. Mm, a little too big. See that? Just a little too big. So here's what I'm going to do for improv improvising. I'm going to cut this out as a full block, and then I'm going to take this one here and applique it on to this block. And I'll show you what I mean by that, because I actually have an example of that here um, that I did with another t-shirt quilt that I'm actually in the middle of making. It's This is t-shirt quilt season for me. I know you would have loved to have me. I would have loved to have been there. Okay, so, right? What? Oh, okay, I thought you were talking to me. So right here, this particular piece was part of the front of this shirt and she didn't want to have two half blocks next to each other, like this, so the, the, this is, this is a quarter block, quarter block into a half block, okay? So she didn't want to do that with this because it was just that little thing, but it's her mom's name. So what I did is I cut out a square, stitched it down really close all around, trimmed around the excess, and made an applique. You can barely tell unless you're really looking at it. See that? So that's what I'm going to do with this particular one. I'm going to do this as a full block and then do an applique. Um, I'm waiting on one more half block for that other shirt and we're ready to rock and roll for that one that we can get that one done. This makes it so much easier now, guys. Whew, I'm telling you. So I can do this one to wait. I can go like this and make this 11 down here and then put garner down here, put the garner down here, or I can move this up and do that but the problem is this collar here is not a regular collar so I'm going to scooch it down and give myself as much as possible at the bottom squaring it up it makes it so much easier I mean I used to just sit there for hours cutting out t-shirts for t-shirt quilts um and then my husband which he's super smart he is a smart man. He says, why don't you have a template for that? You have templates for everything else. I was like, that's right. Why can't I do a template? So, because he asked the question, I then asked Leslie. This was a, about a, I don't know. It was before Tennessee, before I went to Tennessee to do one. I had another set made from that template shop. Same thing. I sent them the files and everything like that and they made it for me. Um, but the difference is these are, this is glitter. <laughs> the other ones didn't have glitter. All right, so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to put the garner right here. So I'm going to cut this into a half. And then you can kind of see how this is just going to go. like that and make a full block. This is why I get paid the big bucks, guys. I really don't. If you knew how long it took to actually make these and what I charge, you'd be like, what? But I enjoy them. 
I enjoy capturing people's memories and letting them enjoy repurposing them. All right, I'm gonna make this nice and flat once again. Use my half block. Okay, and cut around. Cutting around the half block is so much easier, obviously, because it's smaller. Okay. So now what I'm going to do so that I know what I'm doing with this is I'm going to just pin this together right here. Pin these two together so I know that this is one piece all together. And put that in the full block. And then this, I can throw away. All right, let's keep, oh, see? That was not Luna that time, that was totally me. I almost knocked down the, sorry guys. I promise that I have not been drinking. I promise I haven't been drinking. There you go. You guys can see a little bit better. That's another, those other t-shirt quilts that I'm working on next. All right. So this one here, again, it wants to be, uh, it says Blue Crew. And then that's Freshman. Um... This is a club. Okay, so I'm gonna put those two together. Oh, oh no, maybe, maybe not, maybe not. Juniors, oh, okay, I'm gonna put the freshman and the junior shirt together. So those would be one. I'm going to put the Atlanta Braves with this USA Cuba. So that'll be another block and then this brewers with blue crew so then that way this is three six half blocks which equals three um blocks so it may or may not actually go together sometimes i just do a row of just the halves then i do a full then a half and a full i just play around with it really just to try to Get as much as I can out of it. Oh, actually, this is a two one. Good thing I noticed. Look at that. That's a two one. Oh, well, I didn't have to do that. Okay. Mm. Let's see what we can do. <laughs> Let's see what we can do. Jane, are you guys going to be doing the retreat again next year? Was it was it worth it? Was it relaxing and fun and all that jazzy stuff <coughs> um, excuse me the cord for the light that I don't have plugged in <clears throat> excuse me I got a tinkle in my throat. Cutting it in half, down the side and under the arm. All right.
could maybe do the same thing with this one. <clears throat> I'm trying to see how I can figure out how to make it all together, but if not, we'll see. Yes, it was. We reserved some time in April for the same place. Ooh, you got to send me the deep on that. Deep, deep. And are they pet friendly? Because <clears throat> now I have my Nuna <laughs> with me. Everywhere I go, she's taking a nap currently. She is so cute. She she got um she was getting tired, so she put herself in the crate, <clears throat> which is what you want for them, you know, to feel like they're comfortable and like that's like their little den, and they can go there to rest and have comfort. <clears throat> Bam. Just like that. Okay, so I think I'm going to be able to do this with that and add that all together. <clears throat> so the extra little details like this is what makes it memorable it's like just thinking about like me as a mom you know if i wanted to keep both of these what would i would do and stuff <clears throat> okay okay so this one she said she just wanted this one but there's also like this big trojan thing on the back so i'm gonna see if i can do two half blocks to put together since i lost a half block with that one. <clears throat> and I would say that 20 blocks, um, full blocks, two half blocks equals one full block. 20 full blocks makes a good size throw. It's bigger than a baby, like a crib blanket, but smaller than a twin. So it's still big enough to cover, but not so big that it's like covering up your entire couch if you want it as like a couch. I don't know why I did that one that way. It needs to go this way. Oh, silly. Okay, I have stuff falling all over the place. This is one that was I'm saving for as an extra because I didn't know if he wanted to keep that one or not. All right, I say he, but it could be a she. I don't know. Will do. I have two fur babies. My pet sitter lived in Wake Forest. That's why I was there yesterday. Oh, you have a pet sitter. Also, I guess they don't allow dogs. Okay, that looks pretty good. No, unfortunately, they don't. We need to get with the times. Doggies are our lives. Oh, 
are so many places that allow dogs. Like the hotel I was at this weekend, they have, they allow dogs. Um, and it was $75 extra for up to five nights. So it was only $75 more for the whole stay for her to come with us. Um, and so she was able to come with us. And it, that was really cool. They go <clears throat> and I found that these templates work so well, they make it so much faster, so much easier. Like, you know, and I don't have to put these two blocks together, I could separate them so I just get color. Um, so I'm gonna put those to the side because those are full blocks, and just double check there's nothing on the back on this one. And we're almost done cutting these. That's about what I paid for the hotel I stayed at for a Kasai's workshop at your studio. Yeah, I, I mean, it was very affordable. She was with me and we all had a blast. <clears throat> she came with us to the community service project. We do a community service project when we do our Christmas dinner. Um, so we did that and she was with us. She stayed outside. We went to the to the halfway house. Halfway house, homeless shelter, I'm not really sure. Or something like that. But we gave stuff to families and collected all that stuff together as a family. Oop, there we go. She got to go with us. So this is another one that I didn't look and see. It is a two word. All right, so I know she wanted this one for sure. I'm gonna put these two together and put this one as a maybe. Just to keep things. All right, let's see here. The good thing is that this design matches very well with the, with the other side. So I should be able to cut it all at once with the big block. But just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna seal it out. It's finished. All right. I love the Atlanta Braves. They were my favorite team for a very long time. I don't really watch baseball as much anymore because I used to like to actually go to the games, not just watch them on TV. On TV, I'm sorry, guys. I fall asleep. I fall asleep to a baseball game on TV. <laughs> football, not so much. Basketball, not so much. But, foot, but baseball, yeah, I fall asleep. There's always one corner that I missed. All right, so this one could possibly be a half block. So what I'm gonna do is take this one and put it over here, just in case. I know I want this one as a full block, but that's not gonna, I'm not gonna be able to get that in anywhere because it's such a big design. But like again, I could have it in two different spots. So I 
fur babies. Right, now I'm making sure there's nothing on this side. But this does, this does have a design on the other side. So I'm going to cut it in half and then leave that to the side in case I need a filler. If I need it, I'll cut it. If I don't, then I don't need to cut it. Just take me some time right now. So that's a half block. And this is an extra block. I swear, these people are out here every week. Every week. All right, again, just making sure. Yep, it's just this side. I'm going to do the same thing. Sorry, guys. I guess they're cleaning up after the debris and stuff. There was, you know, leaves and stuff and branches, small branches, flying around and stuff. But there wasn't anything, like, crazy. At least not here. Like I said, a mile down the road, oh, yeah. You could, you could see it. And this is the last one, guys. After this, I'm going to lay it out, send it to the lady, make sure she approves the layout. If anything needs to be changed, we can change it after I take a picture of it. And that picture that I take also uses as a reference for me to look at it and say, okay, this is what was approved and then I keep that up while I'm stitching it because that way it kind of acts as my pattern my quilt pattern all right so let's see how many we have of these we've got one two we could possibly do that one as a three so that's one, two, three, four. Oh no. No. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19. So that gives me 19. So 
So I need one more full block. And I'm trying to figure out whether I want it to, it to be this one versus class of 2016. Present this ticket at Garner High School at 10 o'clock in the morning on the 10th of June and do not be late. You may bring with you one member of your own family and only one, but no one else, Willy Wonka. So there's this one I can do as a full. I can do this one that says Marvel Us. Um, or I could do the Cardinal as a full block. So I will let her decide. So these are my possible 20th block. Sandra, what type of interfacing stabilizer do you use other than quilt batting? Nothing. I have a method of doing it that I don't do any interfacing with my t-shirt quilts. It makes it heavy and stiff, so it loses the t-shirt feel. So for me, I would rather not um, do that. I used to, when I first started, um, I don't know, guys, let me, let me take you guys over here. Do, 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 do. Go back to my setup. Bam. All right, so that way you guys can ask me questions. So, um, hi, guys. Don't worry about me. I wasn't planning on doing a live, but I decided to because I was like, let me help you guys understand how I go through this whole process. Um, so, what I do. I'm going on to my face, my YouTube, so I can get to see your questions. Um, what I do is I actually serge my pieces together. And it, then it looks like this. That. So then it looks like this. Um, there's two more rows to it, but one of the rows is missing something before I can attach it to that row and then so on and so forth. So that's what I do with my t-shirt quilt. I don't necessarily do the whole interfacing thing. Like I said, I used to, but I don't do it anymore. Um, I find I have a better product when I don't use the interfacing. Okie dokie. Let me see if I have any more questions. Okay. Yeah, so I don't use any interfacing. Um, that's what I do. And in the back, you can see where I surged it. You just have to make sure you have a nice tight surge. Um, and it, it just keeps it together, but doesn't roll it. So you have to be uh, aware of that with your serger. Make sure you don't have a rolled hem or a lettuce leaf um, settings on your serger, just a plain old serger setting is all you really need. Um, yeah. And then when I go to quilt it, I literally just lay it down and just pin it. I start from the center, lay it out straight as possible, and then stitch in the ditch all the way around from, from the center out to each block. Um, I don't do that whole stretching with the backing and everything like that. Um, I base the backing onto the batting like I would normally do it with the whole stretching thing and everything like that. But with the actual t-shirt itself, I don't do that. I do more like a floating method um, that you kind of see with embroiderers too, so they have a floating. Um, that's kind of how I do mine. I just, I kind of pin it to stay where it needs to stay and then stitch all the way around um, in the ditch. Sometimes I may do some free motion quilting, just depending on how I feel that day. Maybe some like half circles around it because I don't want to get into the design. Um, but that's how I do it. Uh, I've been doing it for five years now. When I first got started, I did interfacing, but now I don't. I hope that answers your question, Jan. Any other questions before we get off? I'll try to post a picture of the layout on my Facebook group. Um, over on Facebook, the Garner Sewing Room, if you want to go there. If you're watching this on the replay, then um, you can look at that and then come on over. 
I might do a live tomorrow, just putting it all together um, and or showing you how I do the quilting for other ones because that one is due this week. So it's due by Friday. Um, the other one's not technically due until after Christmas, but I have the t-shirt and I have just about everything I need for that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay it out and stuff. It's just that a second one behind that one. And um, because I'm waiting on a block for that one anyway. So she's dropping off the other half block and the backing for that particular quilt. So I can't really do anything until she brings that to me. So I decided to go ahead and cut up the quilt, which doesn't take very long at all. I mean, it used to take me like four hours to cut a quilt before, just, just cutting out t-shirts for a quilt block. But now it's so much easier now that I have my template from Jolie Lee Creations. <laughs> I'll try to put a link to um, Jolie Lee's Facebook group and her website on my description box. Um, I don't know if she sells them as sets because I just gave her my dimension. I gave her my files and said, here, make them for me. Um, so I don't know. I don't know how she works with that, but I can ask. <laughs> I can always ask. All right, guys. Thank you so much for staying tuned with me. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And in today's comments, if you want to add in there, what is your favorite Christmas dessert? So, like, what is your favorite Christmas dessert? Put that on the comments today. Um, and I'll, I'll see what you guys say. For me, it's kind of harder to say, but I used to like those little um, thumbprint cookies. That's what it is. Those thumbprint cookies with like the raspberry jam on side. Mm, so good. Um, <laughs> those used to be my favorite. <laughs> I haven't had them in a while, but those used to be my favorite uh, Christmas dessert. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Um, have a great day. Sierra, can you shut me off? because it's facing me, so I can't really do the other stuff. Or Dwight Jr., go ahead. Bye, guys.